Welcome to the AFR Saints channel, where we provide you daily content on your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints. Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to leave your comments below and smash that like button. Who that? This is a very, very big week. Um, I don't want to overstate it, but considering the last preseason game is generally just guys that are not going to make the team, and it's really just an opportunity for, for guys to put out tape for whoever might be their next uh, employer. Um. This is a massive opportunity for several guys, and uh, I'll point out three former draft picks that are all very much on the roster bubble, and two of them I, I don't think really have much of a shot at all of making this team. Uh, one is Ian Book. Um, Ian Book, I, I can't see a way that he makes this team. There he might make the initial 53 to protect him and then a day later be cut and then hopefully signed to the practice squad. Uh, I'm sure they, as a former fourth-round pick, they will want to keep him around to see if he can continue to develop and potentially be a, you know, a maybe a, a backup quarterback, a serviceable backup. But we all watched the game on, on Saturday and... You know, a year ago, the Miami game was just unfair to judge Ian Book because of what he had surrounding him in a regular season NFL game. But he is very far from being a consistent, competent quarterback in the NFL. So when you invested a fourth-round pick, I'm not saying that that is an irrelevant asset, but it's not an asset that's going to justify an, a spot on the active roster for a player that's not playing well and is not going to contribute this year. So... I don't expect Ian Book to make the roster. They're going to cut him and hopefully re-sign him to the practice squad. A Traquan Smith's time in New Orleans is going to be done. You all know how I feel about Traquan Smith. I haven't hidden it. I I want to be very clear. It's not a personal thing. I'm, Traquan Smith may be a, a wonderful person. I can't say that I know him. Um, I'm specifically talking from a football aspect of contributing to this team. Um, he, he has been woeful. He is uh, a guy they invested a third-round pick in back in 2018. And um, he has had his opportunities when this organization needed him to step up. And instead, we've seen guys like Deontay Hardy, uh, Marquez Callaway, rip away those opportunities from a guy that was a, that was a third-round pick and has just refused to take a step forward in his career. And the evidence of that, of the validation of my feelings, is the fact that the, as a free agent, the Saints let him go test the market. He had one workout with Atlanta. One workout, and they didn't sign him. So he's back in New Orleans on like basically a zero guarantee deal to try to come earn a roster spot and on this team. I'm gonna tell you, he ain't it. The Saints are gonna keep five receivers. We know who they are. They're gonna keep five receivers. They're gonna keep Michael Thomas, Jarvis Landry, Chris Olave, Marquez Callaway, Deontay Hardy. That's your five. It ain't gonna be Traquan Smith, and he did himself no favors uh, against the Texans this past weekend. So finally. We will be able to wash our hands entirely of Traquan Smith. The the other one that I'm really, really, really hopeful for is Zach Bond. I'm not going to tell you I have a great degree of confidence in Zach Bond turning the corner, but I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. And we've referenced this a couple of times, but... I think the, the 2020 draft class deserves a little more leeway because they didn't have rookie minicamp. They didn't have a true offseason. It was such a weird year with all the COVID protocols and everything. And I'm not making excuses uh, for Zach Bond. But I think similarly with guys like Cesar Ruiz and Adam Troutman, they, those were not NFL-ready guys. Ruiz might have been had he been playing center, but we've gone over the circumstances of why he's playing guard. And the same with Troutman coming from a small school at Dayton. It was natural to think he was probably going to need some time to develop, and you essentially flushed his rookie year. So 
I'm almost looking at this for those three guys. By the way, Tommy Stevens was also part of that draft class, and we all know he didn't make the team. Um, that was Sh Sean Payton acting like a pissed-off teenager. Oh, you ain't taking our guy we want. Now I'm trading other picks to get a guy who's not going to make the team. Anyway. But I really hope Zach Bond steps. He needs to step up. He didn't play against um, uh, against the Texans this last weekend. But, look, this is also sort of an interesting opportunity for Zach Bond because Zach Bond is a, a guy who played at the University of Wisconsin. So he, in some respects, is kind of back home in a place where he's comfortable you know, being back at, um, you know, in Wisconsin. It was interesting today, you know, we played the the soundbite from Dennis Allen early talking about he didn't know what a cheese curd was. Well, Zach Bond, who played his college ball at Nebraska, was asked about this, and he actually had some uh, some fun with the media whenever uh, they asked him about it. <laughs> uh, I think Wisconsin's a very underrated state, um, and I, I, we stay low-key. Not everyone has to know what a cheese curd is. They'll, they'll figure it out if they want to, and then they'll be surprised by the result. Um, he, I think Bond, it was good to see him loose and better to see him actually on the field. You know, he played just 17% of the team's defensive snaps a year ago. Um, and as a third round choice, I want to remind you that when Zach Bond was coming out of the draft, and I went and kind of jogged my memory because it's been several years now. But I went and looked up sort of like a cumulative mock draft projection for Zach Bond. Um, these were analysts from the draft network where they projected Zach Bond. 26 to the Miami Dolphins, 26 to the Miami Dolphins, 30 to the Green Bay Packers, 23 to the New England Patriots, 29 to the Tennessee Titans, 28 to the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, Ryan Wilson of CBS Sports had him going uh, 32 to Kansas City. Um, another at CBS Sports had him 27 to Seattle. Um, another at CBS had him 28 to the Ravens. Do you understand my point? Uh, USA Today had him going 24 to the Saints in that draft. I just read for you 10 draft analysts that had projected Zach Bond in round one. And, of course, he had the dilute sample at the Combine. And so on many people's boards, he, he, he dropped. And it's probably an example of the Saints on draft day looking at the value of a player they probably had much higher graded than a third-round pick. And so they took him, even though Zach Bond isn't maybe necessarily a fit for what the Saints do with their linebackers. Zach Bond can't drop in coverage. We've seen that. He was a really good pass rusher at Wisconsin. That's not what the Saints are asking their linebackers to do, to come off the edge. So maybe it's not a good fit and it'll never work out. But for Zach Bond, if you want to get that next contract, this is it, man. I mean, this is this is year three. If you want to go into next offseason with a bargaining chip and let this organization know that they want to keep you, they got to pay up, this is it. And this might be the last opportunity, this preseason game in Wisconsin. You know, stone's throw from where he played his college football. This week is huge for Zach Bond, who you have to consider is, is, a, is a roster bubble guy right now because of the general lack of depth at linebacker, because of the fact that they brought in John Bostic, they wanted a veteran presence there because of Pete Werner sort of emerging. Uh, they did use a third round pick on him, and they could be. Pay you will be more patient with a third round pick than you would with an undrafted free agent. It goes without saying. But this feels like a massive, massive week for Zach Bond. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.